Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of videos I wanted to make covering the more general aspects of C++ game development. And one of these is a timer class. Because uh, previously, whenever I used a new API, what I had to do is rewrite a new timer for every different API because everyone handled it differently. But with C++11 and the Chrono library, we can just have one timer class that would work whenever we use C++. And that's what we're going to be making today. So let's first start by making a new item that will be our .h, and we'll call this one timer. And in here we'll have if not defined underscore timer underscore h, define underscore timer underscore h. We can delete this. And since timer is such a common name for a class that we probably need to put it inside the namespace. And the one that I'm gonna go with is going to be namespace engine utils because I think of a timer more of as, uh, as a utility and whenever I'm making an engine uh, it would be a part of the utilities of that engine now to move on to the class itself we'll have class timer which will be a singleton so we'll start by a private section and we'll have a static timer pointer as instance and if you followed any of my previous uh, series, um, it's pretty much the exact same singleton setup that we used before. And for now for the chrono library, we will need to include it to use some as variables. So we'll all the way here at the top, we'll include chrono. And the first variable that we're going to be using from it will be std chrono system clock time point. We'll call this one m start time. And that will be our, whenever we reset the timer, that will be our current time. And then std duration, or std chrono duration, chrono duration. And this one will be of type flow. And we'll call this one m delta time. Now for the last variable that we need is going to be a float m time scale. And we'll talk about this uh, a bit later on in the video. Now for our public section, we will have our um, static functions that retrieve our instance and clear it. So we'll have static timer pointer instance and a static void release. And that will be it for our static functions. Now for the timer specific functions, we'll have void reset, which will reset our timer, so our start time. We will have a float delta time, which will just return our delta time. And void time scale, and that will be a setter for our time scale. So in here, in the parameters, we need a float t, which is going to be 1.0f by default and a getter for it as well. So void or float timescale and that's just in case we want to check what the timescale that we're running at is. And for the public functions, the last function that we're going to need is a void tick and that will take our, function, our timer forward uh, as we loop through our uh, game loop. Now for our private functions, we will have our timer constructor and our timer destructor. And that will be it for uh, our .h file. Now to move on to our .cpp, we'll create that. So in our .cpp, we'll add timer. Of course, we'll include our timer.h in here and have our namespace engine utils. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to initialize our static variable here, so s instance. So let's start by doing that, timer pointer. Timer s instance is going to start off being a null pointer. And now to move on to the static functions, we will have our timer pointer, timer instance, and then say if s instance is equal to a null pointer, we want to assign this instance to be a new, so equals a new timer. 
And then at the end of the function, we'll just return our s instance. And that will be it for our instance function. Now to move on to our release, we'll have void timer release. And all this would do is just delete our instance. So delete s instance and say s instance is going to be equal to a null pointer, just so that we don't have a dangling pointer. And that will be it for our static functions. Now to move on to our other functions, the, the functions specific to the class itself, we'll start with the constructor. So we'll have timer, timer. In here, what we want to do is reset our timer and assign our uh, time scale to be equal to 1.0f. And we also want to initialize our delta time, just in case we call uh, for delta time before we tick the timer at least once. So what we want to do is say m delta time is going to be equal to an std chrono duration float of 0, 0.0. And that will be it for our constructor. Now our destructor is pretty simple, it's just empty. So we'll just leave it at that. And then let's move on to the other functions. We will have void timer reset. That is reset, there we go. And as I mentioned earlier, our reset, all it's gonna do is say that our m start time is going to be equal to std chrono system clock now. So our current time is gonna be our start time. Now for our delta time, we're gonna have a float delta time. So float timer delta time. And what this is going to return is m delta time dot count. And that will be it for our delta time. Now for the getter and setter for the time scale, pretty straightforward. We'll have our timer time scale. This one will have our float t. And we'll say that our m time scale is going to be equal to t. Now for the getter, we'll have float timer time scale is going to return our m time scale. And that will be it for these two functions. And finally, our tick function. So we'll have void timer tick. And what this is going to do is assign our delta time. So we'll say m delta time is going to be equal to std chrono system clock now, minus our m start time. So our delta time is the difference between our current time and our start time. And that's pretty much it for a timer class. So now we can go to our main.cpp and start testing it out. So when we go in here, we will include our timer.h. Uh, of course, since our timer is in a namespace, we need to use that whenever we're referring to it. So we'll say engine utils timer pointer timer is going to be equal to engine utils timer instance and that's how we retrieve a new timer we can just have it retrieve our instance and then over here we can say start with a boolean called is running which is going to be equal to true uh, we will also need to have our loop itself. So we'll say while is running and we'll just keep our uh, our execution in here. What we're gonna say is timer tick. So as we run we just gotta keep ticking the timer and then we can say if timer delta time is more than or equal to 1 over 60.0f. So if our delta time is more than 1 over 60, it means that a 60th of a frame or a 60th of a second just passed, so we want to go inside our if statement. And that's pretty much where we have our update and our render for our game loop. But since we don't have an update and a render function to work with here, what we can do is to um, initialize a few variables so that we can 
just not have random numbers in here. So we'll go up here and say float frame rate is going to be equal to 60.0f. So we can take that and replace the 60 with it. So our delta time, if it's less, if it's more than or equal to one over the frame rate, we want to do whatever's in here. And once we go inside the if statement, we want to say timer reset. And the reason why we're resetting our timer in here is because um, we are not changing our delta time when we reset. We're only changing our start time. And this means that we can actually start using our delta time inside the if statement uh, because it won't be reset until we tick one more time. So let's output it and see what we get. So std c out timer delta time and then std end out. So let's output and see what our delta time is equal to. And if we did everything correctly, it should be 0 0.01666 and so on, or something close to that. So let's bring this up and there we go. So 0 0.01666. And if we want to output the actual frame rate, it's pretty much the opposite of what we did here. So if it's one over the frame rate to get 0 0.1666, so if we have our frame rate, we can have, um, we can flip it one more time. So one over delta time should give us our frame rate. And there we go. So our frame rate is running at 59.999 and so on. So what happens if we slow down everything? And we can just use a for loop to do that. So for int i equals zero, i is less than, let's say, a million or so i plus plus and that will pretty much be it for our for loop and let's see if that slows down uh, anything and there we go as you can see the frame rate is kind of shaky now because it depends on how fast it can execute this for loop Okay, so now we know how to limit our frame rate using our new timer. What if we don't want to limit the frame rate and we just want it to output whatever the frame rate running is at the moment? So we can just remove the if statement and take a reset and then show our delta time. And of course, if we do that, this is going to be running so fast because we're not limiting anything anymore. We're running at something like 4,000 frames per second. But what we can do is increment our frames for an entire second and then show it. And that's going to be a lot more viewable. So what we can say is float um, elapsed time is going to be equal to 0.0f. And we'll also have an int frames, which is going to be equal to 0. So what we want to do is increment our elapsed time by, by our delta time every time we run. And as soon as elapsed time is one, since our delta time is in milliseconds, um, or in seconds actually, since our delta time is in seconds, if we keep incrementing our elapsed time, as soon as it hits one, it means one second has passed. So we can say is if, or after we tick and reset, what we can say is elapsed time is going to be equal to plus equal our timer delta time. And then our frames plus plus. And then if our elapsed time is more than or equal to 1.0f, so if one second passed, we want to output what the frame rate is. And the frame rate is going to be equal to whatever frames that have passed. So it's going to be frames divided by our elapsed time. Of course, since we're calling the instance, we always want, want to release it. So what we can say is engine utils here at the bottom, timer, release. And that will be it for whatever we have in here. So now if we run, every one second we should see something show up. And uh, it seems like this is much faster because we did not reset our elapsed time. So after we have our output, we can say elapsed time is going to be equal to 0.0f and our frames are going to be equal to zero again. And then let's run this and see what happens. Here we go. So every second, we should have uh, something output. 
and that's pretty much what we're getting is how many frames or how many iterations per second we're running at which is pretty much 4 million or so or 4.4 million iterations that we're running through of course this is much faster than the other one because we were outputting or doing stdc out in every frame which slows down things quite a bit so now that we're only doing it once per second it's actually running through the iterations a lot faster okay so the last thing i want to show you is being able to get the delta time in any function that we want without having to pass it through so we can have void my function and we can actually take do std see out and say engine utils timer instance delta time std see out or std and del. So we're actually getting the delta time without having access to the timer at all. Where it's ticking, where it's resetting, or it's releasing, it's a different function altogether. But if we call the function in here, so we can say my function, we should still have the same delta time that we have in here. So let's say, for example, I want to copy this. Let's paste it here. But instead of saying this, we can say timer or our timer, so the small timer, delta time. And this delta time and this delta time for my function that's being called here should be the exact same thing. So if I run it, and there we go, three times 10 to the minus seven. And they both should be the same. So, and this should work even if I have different classes, um, w as long as I'm ticking and resetting my timer in my game loop, it will have my delta time anywhere in the game without having to pass that delta time through any functions. I can just call timer instance delta time and I will have that value there. So this is it for the video. I really hope that it helped. Uh, if you have any suggestions about the format, if, if I can improve anything on it, please let me know. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.